What's up, everybody? It's your girl, SK. So I have some time today, so I decided to make another video. Um, kind of expanding on the About Me universe. Because um, for so long, I couldn't be myself. I had a career as an EMT, which I'm very proud of. Um, a lot of people said I couldn't do that because of a few factors. Um, as a child, I had a huge fear of needles. And as an adult, I've gained a little weight since I started the amitriptyline as a preventative for my migraines. Um, but let's just say back when I started being an EMT when I was 19, um, I probably weighed about 120 pounds. And I'm tiny. I'm not very tall. I'm only 5'5". Five five. So, um... A lot of people judged me, and I'm very proud that I proved every single one of them wrong. Um, and then, you know, when the work became really physical, well, it was always really physical, but when I had a kid, I realized, you know, I would need my back. You know, I would need to be able to play with my kid. I, you know, wanted something that was a little less physically demanding than carrying people up and down flights of stairs on a wobbly-ass stair chair or you know, um, tarping them, which I've done. I've been a part of, you know, fire rescue where this person's way too fucking big. Get a tarp and slide them down the stairs. Anyway, um, so me being me, um, I've always wanted to have colored hair and do different things. And um, one thing I have noticed is that things that seem like they would be exotic or weird or normal on me. I've had blue hair. I've had purple hair. My hair is this awesome shade of bright pink that you can't see because I can't get the lighting right today. But, um, you know, makeups that look weird. I was in Sephora with uh, one of my best friends, somebody who used to be my best friend, and she finds this lipstick. She walks up to me and goes, put this on. This is back when you could test things in Sephora. This was years ago, by the way. Um, so I grabbed the little wands, you know, and I put it on and she goes, damn it. I'm like, what? She's like, that looks good on you. It was a black, it was a dark black lipstick. And I go, well, of course it does. Like the weird shit, the things that you think, oh, that's not gonna look good, it looks good on me. So anyway, um, about me, I wasn't able to dye my hair because in medicine, there's still that you have to have a natural hair color. Um, I'm just not about that. I'm not, my skills are my skills and I'm good at medicine. And that's regardless whether my hair is the natural black that it is, or it's purple or it's pink or it's blue. And go fuck your preconceived notions about people with tattoos and colored hair. If you are that old and it is the standard that a nurse is terrible if she has tattoos and colored hair, Go fuck yourself. What you should judge someone on is their bedside manner, their ability to do their job. So I will never be a part of that group. And part of the me video series is this is the first Pride Month. I'm celebrating not as an ally, but as a member of the community. Um, and that's just because I wasn't, I wasn't out until last December. So this is my first out Pride Month. So um, for those of you who don't know, I identify as a pansexual. Thank you. Um, but this video about me is about a very particular subject and I'm going to do my best to stay on subject as I haven't for the last four minutes now. Um, I have some props today, which I'm excited about. We haven't used props before. We're going to use props today. Um, so this video has the topic of magic. Like, Magic, magic. I, I, I don't, I, I, and not the card game. There, let me say it that way. Um, Cause usually if I put like on a profile, like magic is an interest, guys get really like nerdy on me and they're like, oh yeah, you like Magic the Gathering? I'm like, no, I'm a magician. So um, in that though is a backstory. And in that backstory is a reason why I'm not a religious person. 
while I don't hold any credence to religion, and that's my own personal experience, and I am not downing you for being a religious person or, um, you know, your experience with it or whatever the case may be. But for me, this is my story and this is why religion and myself don't go together well. So I already said I'm a magician. Um, again, I brought some props today because these are props I'm excited about. So the first one, I don't know how well this is going to pick up. I have a shitty cell phone. I'm not a professional YouTuber. This, anyway, you can't tell what it is. Okay, I'm seeing that you can't tell. This is my pen from the International Brotherhood of Magicians. Um, it is something I usually carry with me. Like, it's, it was in my wallet for years just because I wanted it to, to be close to me, close to my heart. I'm going to cover some of this. There we go. But what this is, is my card to the International Brotherhood of Magicians. And there's a QR code and I don't want you guys to be able to scan it, but that's my card. Um, for those that are gonna start some shit over it, no, I don't care that it's the International Brotherhood of Magicians and I have a vagina. I, I don't care. I'm so happy to be a part of the club. We could call the club whatever. I just don't care. Like it's never gonna be a hot button topic for me. If we change it to say the international brother and sisterhood of magicians, fine. If we don't, okay. Like some people will fight over anything. And I just don't live that kind of like compulsory need to fight over everything lifestyle. So uh, anyway, getting back on topic here, I'm gonna do my best to try, but we all know I autistic and my brain just kind of So. Um, magic. I actually just became a magician. Uh, the opportunity came up in 2016, I'm going to say 2016, um, for me to actually try that. Okay. So my backstory, uh, I grew up in my grandparents' house. My grandmother was extremely religious and Roman Catholic. Um, As a child, I had an interest in magic. And due to her extreme religion, I wasn't allowed to watch magic shows. I wasn't allowed to express that interest. I wasn't allowed to practice magic. And I'm not talking about witchcraft magic. That'll be a video for another day. I'm talking about practical magic, card tricks, uh, cup and balls, those type of things, magic, magic. Um, because she was so goddamn religious and the Catholic Church is so goddamn against magic. I wasn't summoning demons in my room at seven years old. I wanted to learn card tricks. I wanted to learn a cup and ball set. I wanted to make things appear and disappear. Not, you know, draw things on my floor in blood and summon the devil, which I don't believe in, by the way. Um, but that's, that's what those religious zealots will have you believe magic is. And those of us that can find logic and reason in the world and everything go, I could, I could tell you how to do this. I'm not allowed to, but literally it has nothing to do with evil forces. The reason I made this coin disappear has nothing to do with the dark lords of the world. It really doesn't. So I wasn't allowed to. And I remember um, Lance Burton has a pivotal role in my magic story. Um, I love, I, I loved him. I still love him. Um, when I was a kid, he was like the hottest thing going. You know, I mean, Penn and Teller were also very big, but they were more adult type magicians where um, Lance Burton had more of a, like family friendly type and specials, magic specials. I used to sneak and watch them because it wasn't, I wasn't allowed to watch magic shows. If this sounds
sounds stupid to you, just know that it is. Just know that the religious assholes of the world exist and they will stomp a little girl's dreams because of religion, because of some dude that existed named Jesus and oh, all magic is bad. That bitch performed magic if you believe the fuck that's in that storybook. Water into wine. That sounds like a magic trick to me. A little bit of misdirection. Changing an object into something else from what it started as. Can't be all that bad if the leader of your cult did it. I digress. So anyway, I was in love with Lance Burton. Good looking fellow, that accent. Oh my God, when he talks. And his smile. Like, I was a little girl. I was so in love with him and magic. And he was a magician, you know, like that was the total package for me. I was seven years old. Okay. I, like, I was young, but I freaking loved him. And I wanted to watch all of his specials. I wanted to see everything I could, interviews, everything. And I, I wasn't allowed to, so I had to sneak, you know, I had to not do what I wanted to do. I wasn't allowed to bring home those little kitty magic kits, you know, the little kits that they sell. And I wasn't allowed to. I was barred from this because of religion. And so when I would sneak and I would watch magic shows, it was a whole nother world for me. It was something I, I, I wanted to be a part of when I was a kid. And I literally started five years ago because it's kind of like you don't know what you're missing. Um, I was so far removed from it. I really didn't think a whole lot about it, you know, and then after Lance Burton was the top magician, then came David Blaine with all his odd things and odd shows. And I went, yeah, I don't know that that's, the type of magic I want to pursue. And then came Chris Angel. And I was like, I was older, you know, then. And I was like, you know, um, still magic, still a magician. But my heart really lied with the old school magicians, Penn and Teller and Lance Burton, you know, um, Jeff McBride, those people that I could look up to, the amazing Jonathan. My stage name is Sarah Kirkpatrick. The Amazing Diva. <laughs> you get it. You, you see the inspiration there. And I loved every part of the small illusions, the grand illusions. <laughs> and like I said, you know, you don't know what you're missing. So I grew up without it. I grew up, I moved on, had careers and became a mom and these were all kind of things that just got set to the side because it wasn't in the forefront of my life. Um, medicine and being a mom was, you know, and um, I pretty much became an adult and I became a mom, you know. Um, but uh, had a patient one day and she's not my patient now. So, um, you know, I asked her to come back. The doctor wanted to see her at a particular time, due to some blood work. I was the lab technician. Um, and she goes, I, you know, I, I can't come back then. I'll be in, I always get this wrong. It's Nebraska or Iowa. They have like a corn thing, but it's also a magic festival. It's like a gathering of some of the, the magicians as well. And she goes, I'll be in Nebraska with my best friend. I'm like, oh, you know, who's your best friend? I'm thinking like, some other elderly lady from the community, you know, because uh, my patient was, you know, 80 years old. And she's like, Lance Burton. I'm like, I'm OK, so I'll give it to you. I thought maybe there's a little confusion going on there. And I'm like, Lance Burton, the magician is your best friend. She goes, well, yeah, she goes, I'm a magician, too. I'm like, holy shit. Right. So I am just when something piques my interest, I light up. I can't hide that I am interested. And she goes, do you like magic? I'm like, oh my God, do I like magic, right? So this is this thing that's been in the back of my head since I was a young child. Now I'm 30, 
36 something, 35, 36, something like that. And it's come up again for me. And I'm like, I love magic. She goes, well, I'm a part of a magic club here in Tampa. Maybe you should come to one of our meetings. And I went, shut the front door. Tell me when and where and I'll be there. And I went. And I'm very proud to say, and I'm very proud to have Gloria as a mentor. Um, and I started my journey with this club. And I can tell you that I've not met anyone who is evil or has ill intent. My grandmother was wrong. <laughs> she was wrong. Her religious upbringing and those religious zealots and the Catholic church is wrong. I have made nothing but friends and people who are amazing human beings, who are so nice, who care about me, who show me respect. Okay, there have been a few times and we'll talk about that. Um, there has been some disrespect. Um, but my friends, my core group of magician friends are just some of the most amazing people in the world that I would do so much for, so anything for. I mean, these are really fun people and they're really great people and I have them on my Facebook and I love seeing their lives and I love seeing them do what they do. Um, <sighs> Magic is amazing. And I don't ever want to hear somebody tell a child that they can't be involved with something that brings so much happiness. <laughs> fuck your religion and fuck your bullshit. Because to me, magic has been a godsend. And there is no God in my world. So to me, the universe put that woman in my chair in front of me to open these doors. <laughs> um, for me, magic is just a hobby. I have extreme anxiety. I perform once a year at our club meetings um, in the Bob and Doc Foolis. Uh, I literally had maybe like a month or two the first time I performed to find a trick, learn the trick, and make it good enough to fool these magicians who have been in magic for decades. So it's the same premise as Penn and Teller Fool Us. You have Dr. Jean and Bob Klaas who are magicians who have been magicians for decades and you get up there with your trick and try to fool them. They're allowed one guess each. And if one guesses a method and it's wrong, the other one guesses a method and it's wrong, then you win. It's just that simple. And so I did in that month or two, I mean, I literally had just joined the club. Um, I did a bunch of research. And I knew if I was going to come out on top as someone who has never performed a magic trick before, I had to zig when they expected me to zag. I knew that. I knew that's the formula to most things that you want to win, right? Zig when they expect you to zag. And I looked up a trick that would take not a ton of props. I was living in my car at the time, uh, by the way. So um, I didn't have a ton of space to practice. I didn't have a ton of space to, you know, have props. I didn't have anything. So I developed my character, which I dress as a, a pinup girl. I've got the, you know, victory roll and my hair back and a ponytail and it's usually dyed very black. And I'm wearing, you know, the halter dress and big skirt. Um, and I performed that one trick and I won. I won the competition because I did the research, I did the work, and no one was harmed. Nothing bad happened. Because magic isn't a bad thing. Because this type of magic isn't dark arts. And so I won, which was great. I mean, the first time I've ever performed in front of people, and the first time I've ever performed a magic trick, came with accolades, you know, not great. I mean, come on, it's a small club, you know, but for me, that was the epitome. That was, that was, I set out what I, ac I accomplished, what I set out to do, which was to win, to be the underdog and go, 
Y'all have decades on me. I beat out people who have decades on me in magic by perfecting the formula and the technique. And I think that that's what you need. You need both, by the way. Um, but being a part of this club has introduced me to people I've looked up to. And I'm so happy for that. These are people I call my friends. And uh, this isn't a shout out video or anything. But, um, you know, the only thing I can say is I have a friend that I am incredibly jealous of. Um, he's my friend. And... You know, when he came to lecture at our club, I already knew who he was from television appearances. And yes, I had a crush on him. Uh, but uh, in just talking to him and his life story, he's been doing this since he was a kid. And I was jealous because we're kind of the same age, kind of. I think we're almost exactly the same age. Um, but I was jealous because and I hate to admit that, like, I don't know that jealous is the right word, maybe envious. His parents supported him and he got to do this since he was a kid. And there I am coming in at almost 40 years old, brand new to something that people have done, people my age have done for decades because they didn't have to deal with that religious ass stereotype that magic was bad. They were allowed to pursue something that made them happy and as an adult now, I'm allowed to pursue that thing that makes me happy. You know, I support all of my magic friends. I think it's terrific. I love the community. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. And this is where we got to get away from those overly religious thoughts. You know, this is, it, you're harming people. Stop. You and your religion is causing harm to people. I mean, just some of the mental anguish, you know, I feel personally because I wasn't allowed to do this as a kid. Again, it got pushed to the background, came to the forefront as an adult, and I'm sitting here going, I've got to catch up. I can't tell you guys how inadequate I feel when I see a really, really small act. I see a really kind of, you know, all magic to me is still very cool. I'm still in love with the wonder and the mysticism of it. And I go, I should have learned that already. It's very easy for me to know techniques and know what's going on. But I feel so far behind and I feel like I was so repressed in this for so long and I was. It's okay for me to feel that way because I was. I should have had, I feel like I should have had those supportive adults in my life that went, this isn't harming anybody. I don't harm anyone. And it's, it's not, it's not right. Your hurtful words towards children still hurt. My grandmother's been dead since I was like 15 or 16. It still hurts. It still hurts that I'm so far behind because I grew up in that household. Magic isn't bad. Magic is wonderful. It's a great community that I am proud to be a part of. It should have never been taken away from me as a kid. I should have been just like my friend, learning as a child. Right now on AGT, there's this little boy and he's so super cute and I forgot his name. I kind of just talk. I don't have like place cards. I don't have notes. Um, oh my God, he's so freaking cute. And the little card trick he did was so cute. And it doesn't matter that, you know, magicians will pick each other apart. And I've seen that. And uh, I never, 
I try to never lose the wonder. I always want to view it as a spectator. You know, I know that, you know, I've seen my friends perform. I've gone too. And I want them when they see me, if they see me in the audience, obviously I'm going to stand out a little bit. But I want them to see in my eyes and my reaction the same excitement and wonder that they see in people who have no idea what's going on. <laughs> like, I it, I'm so happy for people that can be a part of this community and do really well with this. I mean, this is amazing. I do feel a lot of love in this community and I'm so happy to be a part of it. Oh, sorry, it's not boogers. I'm gonna take a minute, get myself a little composed and I'll come right back. Okay, so now you get to deal with the Rudolph nose since I didn't redo my makeup because I'm probably gonna cry through at least maybe one more part of this video. Um, I still look really upset, so I apologize. My looks are not the best right now, but whatever. Who cares? Whatever. We don't always see everyone at their best. So, um, again, magic is amazing. Don't take that away from anybody. And if you're an adult and there's a performer at a children's birthday party, and they're performing magic that is specifically designed for children. And you complain about how easy those tricks were. Or obviously this was kid stuff. I did that as a favor to someone. Uh, she wanted a magician. She was a coworker and wanted a magician at her granddaughter's very first birthday party. Whatever, there were other kids there. Wasn't much of a paying gig because I was like, look, you're my coworker, I will do this. I have no experience in performing in front of an audience, but I was able to put together a show. I had props, I had, you know, everything. And I could hear the adults going, well, this is kind of lame. The kids that were in the front were fine. The kids enjoyed it. It's the adults that are assholes, which is why I don't like to perform for adults because adults are assholes. Because adults have that preconceived notion that I know what's going on or they can't lose themselves in the moment. So I always try to do that. If I see a magic show, I always try to remember Today I'm just a spectator and I try to lose myself in the magic and I, tr I do, I do. I look at things and in the back of my head, I know exactly what's going on, but in the front of my brain, I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I still enjoy it. Um, so the dark side, the part that isn't all love and flowers and happiness, um, the comments about my sex, and I mean that as in I'm a girl, I'm a woman, technically, whatever. Um, magic has traditionally been a bunch of old white guys. If you're offended by that statement, you're probably an old white guy who's in magic. And that's what it's been. Because we all know that that's who's had the upper hand in a lot of things. Um, like I said, I'm part of the IBM, the International Brotherhood of Magicians. Change it, don't change it, I don't care. I, I don't care about that. Um, personal experiences that I have had that have been bad. Um, constantly being asked whose assistant I am. I am no one's actual assistant. I have no problem assisting my friends because I do understand the workings of magic. Pretty girl, tight dress, distraction, don't look at me, look at her. I get it. 
I understand. I am not anybody's assistant, though. I am a magician in my own right, and I don't appreciate that being your first question to me. You can ask if I am an assistant, and I understand the sexist history behind that, but I am not. Again, don't mind helping out my friends. My friends are my friends, and I'll do anything for them. But I am not. Uh, secondly, um, there's been a lot of comments. Um, I told one person about this in my club, and I showed him the text. Um, my club held a magic convention, and one of the magicians there was somebody I did, I did, used to, past tense, uh, look up to. Uh, that person found me on Facebook that day. And so uh, they had a table there. And I remember this, my phone goes off, you know, as I was walking around and I look down and I go, well, that's this person supposedly, but you know, scammers, Facebook, hello. And I just walked up there and I go, is this you? And he said, yes. And I go, how did you find me? Well, your friends are here. All your friends are tagging you. And you know, I don't know you. Well, add me on Facebook. You know, we can talk shop. Okay. The messages that came through after the convention closed were inappropriate. And I only showed them to my friend because I'm sitting at dinner with my friend because after our club meetings, we used to go to dinner. And he goes, come on, he didn't say that. And I pulled it up and I went, here, read this. He's like, I can't believe he said that to you. Um, so the sexism thing, I'd say that needs a little working on. I get it. Girls in magic are new. But let's embrace that. Let's love that. Let's say, hey, you know what? Equality. Right? Equality. Right? You know, I'm all for, you know, everybody doing what makes them happy. But at the same time, you, you can't come in with your old school values. Hey, that's a girl. I'm going to hit on her and make her feel really uncomfortable. That's a hard no for me. Um, it is something I've dealt with in other careers. Um, I was an EMT at 19, so that was like 20 years ago. And then there were not a lot of girls in emergency medicine. There, there wasn't. There wasn't a lot. There were some, of course, of course. But there wasn't a lot. And there I was, sprightly 19 and cute and, you know, small figured. And I got it there too. Fire stations I worked at, the private companies I got, I worked at. It happened there too. And as a female, it's just something... You just know when you're entering a male-dominated industry that you are going to deal with. So I've dealt with it as an EMT, and I've dealt with it as a magician. And that would probably be the only bad thing that I've dealt with with magic, is, is those, those inappropriate comments. Um, otherwise, oh, it's a great community to be a part of. I'm very proud of all of my friends and their accomplishments, and I'm very proud of my accomplishments in the community as well. Um, I'm very proud to be a part of it, finally. I have so much to learn, and I look forward to it. I work a lot, so um, I don't have a lot of time to learn everything, like all those people that have had this opportunity since they were kids. But I'm gonna keep learning, and I'm gonna keep growing, and magic is wonderful, and don't ever, ever take that away from a child. Don't ever take it away from anybody. It's not bad. The religious connotations that go along and say this is bad, you're wrong. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. You're wrong. Magic isn't bad. Magic is wonderful. Meeting so many people as I have, you know, it really could have opened a lot of doors for me if I wanted that. I have extreme anxiety and I don't, I don't want that. I don't want to be a famous magician. I don't want to be on stage. I don't want to have my own show. 
um, an older magician asked me, you know, during one of those, uh, well, we had like a lunch type thing once. And he goes, what do you want to do? I used to have my own stage show with tigers and all this and, you know, girls that disappear and all this. And I go, right now I'm just here to learn. I made so much money. I had three houses. I had three wives. And... Nope. That's probably never going to be me. My anxiety is through the roof. Back to that first time I performed ever. Um, I was wearing high heels. And if you've ever seen a newborn baby goat trying to walk, that is exactly me in high heels. I'm a tomboy. I wear chucks on most occasions and sketchers otherwise, otherwise sandals. Um, high heel girl is not really me. Mm -mm. So I wore heels because it matched the outfit or whatever. Um, I kept pushing when I would do something, it just happened to work out that way, I guess. Um, when I would do something, um, I would cross my feet behind me and like put my foot down. And uh, Dr. John was like, hey, you know, that was really good. Every time you tried to do something, you would do that. And that's a little distraction. I go, oh, no, I was just trying not to fall over. Like, that was not a part of something I thought about cognitively when I moved. I had to do that so I didn't fall over. That's, that's me. That's me on stage in heels trying not to fall over. That's what you can expect. But also, I have extreme anxiety. And I do not, like I said, I perform once a year in front of my club and that gives me anxiety and I shake and I get very upset and it's, and this is my friends. These are my friends. These are people who, if they have any criticism, it's to make me better. If they have any criticism, it's to say, here's what I saw, here's what I liked and here's where this can be better, this can improve. And that's great. Like, no one is mean about anything there, ever. But just the fact of being in front of people and performing scares the living shit out of me. And I don't, I don't like to do that. So I'm never going to take this anywhere more than my club. You know, and I'm perfectly okay with that. I had anxiety. I had a panic attack at a Christmas party because there was way too many people in the space and I was, I freaked out, you know? Um, it, it, no. So, so could I be somebody? I could, but it, at the same time I couldn't and I, I don't want that. I love traveling. I love living in a hotel. I don't live in a hotel now, obviously, but I love that lifestyle per se. But I wouldn't love the attention. I wouldn't love people looking at me all the time. I wouldn't, the anxiety, obviously. Oh my God, hello, no. Um, so if someone has an interest in something, I'm just gonna say, please, please put your religious preconceptions aside. And, and let children practice magic. It's fine. No one's getting hurt. No one's being harmed. Magic is a great community for someone to be a part of. Even with the bad experiences I've, I've had, it's still a great community. And everyone should be able to experience that. And it's, it was taken away from me as a child so as an adult, I'm behind and I still have a lot to learn. But eventually one day, as I've talked with my friend Gary about, my daughter's a big fan of elephants. And one of the biggest things I can imagine is doing it for her, is the disappearing elephant trick. We've, you know, talked about, you know, there's different techniques to it, different ways you can accomplish it. And I go, I don't care. I just need Tampa Zoo to be like, Sarah, you can have this elephant for a couple hours while you perform a magic trick for your daughter. Of course. I don't think that's going to happen, but that would be like my ultimate, my end game, I guess. Like to make an elephant disappear from my daughter would be like the only desire I, I truly have. But anyway, I got off topic throughout this. I'm sure that's fine. 
it's what I do. I, I don't really stay focused in these videos a lot, but the point is, let the magical beings be magical beings. <laughs>